There is a ton of building going on at Portland's airport. It's in the middle of a $2 billion project. And the thought and design behind that project, the new terminal, is impressive. And we thought you should get a look at how hard they and the Yakima Nation work together to create an amazing structure with sustainable lumber. Environmental reporter Cale Williams has our story. This is part of our forest. This is, has been logged. Christy Feyander has been around timber her whole life. When I was a young child, my grandfather, he was the first uh, Native American Yakima owned logging business. That's left her with a deep reverence for the woods on the Yakima Reservation in central Washington. So growing up and, and um, having that connection to the forest, even as a young child, you know, most of our people here on this reservation, we, we utilize this forest not only for recreation, but a lot for uh, food gathering, um, foods and medicines. Finder so now works for Yakima Forest Products. I am the resource manager. And my job is to get the logs to the mill. And if you haven't seen any of their wood, just wait a few months. Yakima Forest Products was one of a handful of suppliers of the 2.6 million board feet of Douglas fir that went into the roof of the new terminal at Portland International Airport. Vince Granato is the chief projects officer for the Port of Portland. The whole project really was one about how do we do this differently. It's our one shot at really making a statement here. This is a big project. We know this is going to be around for a 50-year timeline. And the new terminal will certainly look different from most other airports. Its undulating roof covers some nine acres. There will be live trees in the concourse and skylights that bring in natural light. But the folks behind the new terminal didn't just want it to look different. They wanted it built different, too. You normally, you might just go out and give me the low bid. We're not doing a low bid here, right? We want to make sure that whatever we are using for this project is sustainable. The roof is constructed of mass timber, a process where smaller pieces of wood are glued together to form structural beams. It's been touted as a low carbon alternative to concrete and steel. But of course, wood is only as environmentally friendly as the forest where it's harvested. To know something is truly sustainable, you need to be able to trace your materials all the way back to their source. So that when we install it, we know where every piece of wood came from. That is not your traditional construction. It hasn't been done before. Certainly not to the scale that we're doing it. And that meant the folks building the airport, they had to set up a whole new supply chain. This is a Doug Fir product. I'm assuming it's from Elk Creek Forest Products. So they enlisted the help of Sustainable Northwest, <laughs> a nonprofit that's been working on sustainable forestry for decades. We all care about forests. We all Paul Vanderforden is their Green Markets Program Director. You build a connection between big buildings like the airport and forest through relationship. You can't do it with certifications and paperwork alone. He said that timber harvests are often seen as a detriment to forests, but it doesn't have to be that way. It's very easy because of history to see the harvest of trees as potentially harmful. I think the unique nature of this project is it sees the support of the wood products infrastructure as a critical ally and conservation tool to achieve stewardship. That emphasis on stewardship led Vanderford to connect the airport with the Skokomish and Coquille Indian tribes and the folks at Yakima Forest Products. The pride that we have as a people in how we manage our forest goes back to time immemorial. Finder said they never do clear cuts, instead thinning the forest and leaving the healthiest trees behind to flourish. We don't go for the, the biggest, best trees. We want to leave the biggest, best trees. We want to leave them so that they can reproduce more trees, you know, for, for our future generations. That makes for a more open forest, which is more resilient to wildfire, provides better water retention, and helps with salmon habitat. So by doing selective logging and opening up our canopies, it provides that sunlight to come down. It, it provides for our understory to flourish where our foods and medicines grow. It also allows for the snow to pack down in the wintertime and be able to store water. As Vanderford put it, when you are connecting with communities like Yakima, you're getting a lot more than wood. Yakima Forest Products also runs its own mill. Yeah, so. Where Tyler Martin as Bob works as a sales manager. He said there's a sense of pride among the folks processing the logs into lumber. We got to go over there when it was being built um, and we got to see all of it and it, and it was a really cool to see that they've actually separated and they can actually tell where our wood is versus anybody else's. Now, the new terminal was originally supposed to open in May, but it's been pushed back due to construction delays. When it does open, though, Granado said he hopes it's a source of pride, both for the people who live here 
and for those coming for the first time. Absolutely, we realize we're the front door, we're the first thing they see, sometimes it's the last thing they see on their way out the door. We wanna leave a good impression. And there'll be signage, noting the contributions of people like Christy Feinder. And that, well, that comes with its own sense of pride. I feel like it's a good thing to be able to let people know that we are still here, that we're still here, that we're, we don't live in teepees, <laughs> we live in homes, and that we're still contributing to society, you know, in a good way.